It's BT with the BT 75th anniversary Silverstone GP review. Let's get right to it. The liveries stole the show on SGP. I didn't they? Didn't the liveries steal the show? I mean, don't get me wrong. The racing was good. I give the racing a B plus, A minus. But the livery, that old school livery, and Paula Spargo dressed like Peaky Blinders. Damn, damn. But let's be honest, Peaky Blinders. They. I don't think they were racing motorcycles back then. But I don't know. I'm not that old. But still, I thought that sold the show. Um, I think for me personally, I love the Honda, the, uh, the Freddie Spencer look, and also the Randy Mamola, the O to them. And I thought it was funny when uh, Susie Perry asked Yo and Zarco, uh, she goes, oh, you guys have a great liver. He goes, yeah, I know. And, which is true. That Castro, that green on that LCR bike was great. Um, I thought, except for Ducati Corsa, Factory Ducati, it's like they did a reveal and they were like, Y'all didn't do a damn thing. I mean, didn't they? It's like it didn't change shit. I know you have to go with sponsors, but they was like, y'all didn't do a goddamn thing. You know, it, so it's like they didn't even try. You know what I mean? Everybody else tried. I thought the Pramac team looked great. That old to um, to uh, uh, Nieto. I thought it was great. And Hill Nieto, that, uh, that livery was great. I thought... Uh, I thought the Yamaha livery was great. For some reason, my favorite livery was Gas Gas. Pedro Acosta from top to bottom. I, to me, he stole the show. For me, Pedro Acosta. Uh, second was Jack uh, Jack Miller and uh, Brad Bennett. The KTM's. I, I don't know why the Wonder Bread livery. That's what it was to me. The, the Wonder Bread livery. I, I thought that was great. Of all, I know it's weird, but I thought KTM livery was great. What was your favorite livery uh, from the GP weekend? Now let's go and let's go with the racing now. Let's go uh, Moto Three. Ride of the race, Moto Three. Ride of the race, Moto Three. Goes to David Munoz. Started twenty fourth, ended up twelfth. Damn, good job. He got booted off the track. Um, heartbreak goes to uh, Scott Ogden. Home race through no fault of his own. He gets caught up with Anhel Pacaris and did a high side right in front of him. He crashed. Hey man, it happens, mate. Keep your head up. But um, uh, shout out to Ivan Artola. It's gonna be a four race battle to the end. Ivan Artola. It was his birthday weekend, and he gets a home win. You know when I played. Uh, uh, the baseball, when I played t-ball, my brother played t-ball, and he was sponsored by McDonald's, and they would get McDonald's after they win, or after they won or lost, they got McDonald's, and that's what he did, he got McDonald's that weekend, I mean, you can't beat that, happy 20th birthday, and he gets it with a win, props to uh, uh, Ivan Artola, Moto 2, it may have been the uh, best racing of the weekend, uh, Jake Dixon won on his home race, damn, shout out to Jake Dixon, he beat the Bulldog and Aaron Connett, he looked like he just got out of prison with all them tattoos, but shout out to him, last lap pass, and uh, Connett wasn't expecting it, and Connett was focused, I don't know if you follow Connett on Instagram, he had all these focus quotes, and he still got beat, and I don't know what the deal is with him. I don't know. Like, he just can't. He's always a bridesmaid, never a bride. I don't know what it is with him. And I love the kid, but he just can't get it to happen. You can see it in his face, too. But anyway, um, ride of the race, though, goes to the babyface assassin, Sergio Garcia. Sergio Garcia started 24th, ended up fourth. Started 24th, ended up fourth. Damn. You just want to, you want to hug his cheeks. I'm going to go, Sergio. Good race. And he goes, put me down. And you got to give him his booster seat and put him in the, in the paddock and pack him up and get ready to go to Austria. Props to him, Sergio Garcia. Heartbreak goes to Ayagura. Ayagura started on pole. He got the pole. He finished 14th. Started pole, finished 14th. Even Fermi and Aldegir was like, damn, bro, what happened to you? I mean, I know that was a bad race because I was behind you. Fermi and Aldegir, I don't know what happened to him either, but still, Ayagura, and what's weird about Ayagura is Listen, it's, it's, it's just a fact that if you're an uh, Asian rider, especially Japanese descent, that and you do really, really, really well, you go from Moto2 to Moto GP, but you go to LCR team. It has, that's what Taka does. I mean, it, Honda. Honda, that's where they're from. They're from Japan. Honda. And so it's how bad Honda is. It's how bad uh, the whole Honda squad is. Ayagura was like, nah, I want to go to track house racing. An American team. I rather go to my the American team than to my home country team in Honda. He could be a hero in Japan. He raced for Honda. They would have a parade in his name if he won a race or got a podium. I mean, Taka Nakagami, is, Taka is still holding on only because nobody wants that seat. Nobody wants. You know what this be like? It, with Ayagura going to track house, it'd be like me if I played basketball and I was from Detroit and I got picked in the, uh, in, the, in the NBA draft to go to Detroit. The Pistons picked me, hometown boy, to go to Detroit. And I went, nah, I want to go to Utah. What? Yeah, I'd rather go to Mormon land than play for you. Damn. 
that's how bad it is at Honda. I mean, they they can't even get their hometown people to race on that bike. That that's a shit show at Honda right now. It's a shit show and it's a double feature. A double feature matinee shit show and a hey, and they ain't even serving popcorn. That's how bad that is. Anyway, let's get the Moto GP. Round the race of Moto GP goes to Fabio Quartararo. Who? Fabio. Who? Fabio Quartararo. Started 18th, finished 11th. Damn, you wouldn't know about it because they don't show him. I think uh, he he just got found by the FBI and uh, and he was. And he was at 11th place. He was at 18th. They found him at 11th. So good for him. Harper goes to Brad Bender. He was out before the race even started. He had a clutch problem. You know what it reminds me of? I watched the boxing match one time. I don't know if you guys seen it. And they, and they hit the bell for the, first, for the first round. And this guy literally just raised the ropes up and walked out. Didn't even go and try to throw a punch. He just walked out. Yeah. And that's what that was like for Brad Bender. I feel for Brad Bender. Damn. But now we get to... It was the weekend of the Beast. The, week, the Beast was my MVP. What the Beast did was phenomenal. He just goes to show, if you if he qualifies on the front row, it's over. He, listen, he's 49 points behind. He passed Marquez this weekend. He's 49 points behind. He technically can win. He Technically, if he won the next two weekends, he technically could be in first place, but that's if the, the other two just fell off the, uh, fell off the earth, but that's not going to happen. But nobody manages tires like the Beast. I mean, seriously, nobody. When they say nobody, I mean, nobody manages tires like the Beast. But and we're thinking, Mark has even said it though, but he like he he can't ride the uh, when tires are new. He's not good riding tires that way. He, he they have to fall off a little bit. And the way he rides, he comes on better the latter part of the races. But damn, I mean, props to Enea Bastianini. His stock is rising, and KTM stock is falling quicker than Boeing. Now I ain't gonna say too much more about Boeing because I don't want to end up committing suicide in my truck outside of my apartment. You know what I mean. Boeing, come on now. But that's what KTM is. I mean, I feel for him. I mean, basically right now, Pedro is our only hope. It's like great Pedro is. Instead of going to Ibiza and partying like everybody else did, he went to Austria, to the KTM factory. He goes, listen, guys, this is what I need. Tell me what you guys want. I'll tell you how I like to ride. Let's get this shit solved. That's a rookie. So props to Pedro. Um, anything else? Uh, yeah. Like I said, the livery stole the show. My favorite livery was Pedro Acosta, actually. So tell me what your favorite livery was before I get out of here. Also, uh, if you guys get a chance, watch Born Racers. It's a documentary of the Red Bull Rookies Cup. It comes on Cinemax. It also comes on the channel. I'll forget which one it is. But watch Born Racers. It's worth it. It's about the Red Bull Rookies Cup and the families that are involved and how much they sacrifice for their kids. Damn, we do it all for the kids because we love the kids. Anyway. I give the, the the review, like I said, I give this GP a B plus only because, man, it was a little bit flat because, listen, attendance was down 6,000. What sucks is, is that Formula One was just there last weekend, and granted, it was a good Formula One race. I have to give it props. Lewis Hamilton won on home soil, but let's be honest, man. GP is so much better than Formula One. I mean, this year was okay, but still, I mean, GP deserves better, and I love you Brits. Come on now. You got to represent better than that, but still, props to... Uh, Props to GP with delivery. They got to do that once at different, I think, at different tracks, different things to get people out, maybe. I think we need different tracks that people are going to come to. Um, I think another night race. How about you guys? Another night race. Okay, I like, I like what Qatar does. That's great. But I think another night race would be great. I mean, I don't know what the track you can do it on. But GP needs another little, mm, another little shot in the arm. Uh, I love GP, but he needs a little shot in the arm. But anyway... And Nea Bastianini, he and Mark Marquez need to work together to bring down the points because now uh, Martin and Bagnaya are going to start basically being conservative. Where they're going to start give, they don't want to give uh, too much, too many points away. Apparently, apparently they don't give a damn about the about the sprints because Bagnaya crashes out of the sprints. Martin might crash out of sprints, but they don't really give a damn about the sprints. You can lose half your, you know, a little bit of points, but not all the points. Sunday they come to the race. Nobody turns it around quicker than Mark Marquez. I thought Mark Marquez something was wrong with him. Back in my day, we didn't say the R word. And back in my day, we just go, mm, that boy's a little bit off. When you want right, they go, mm, that boy's a little off. And I thought Marquez was off. Doesn't he seem like he's been off this year? Like, remember, like, he and Frankie Morbidelli crashed? I mean, they bumped into each other in, in the Sasha ring. And Mark said, that's when he woke up. And then basically, he fell asleep in Mugello. Remember, he and Bastianini were in the back, and they were just, and all of a sudden, Bastianini goes, shit, I can get a podium. And he just took off, and Mark was like, oh, yeah. It's like he's been just a little butt. He's on the, uh, the GP23, and he kind of knows it's not as fast as the GP24, and he's always going to be, like, 
three or four tenths behind. So like he kind of knows no matter what he does, like they, basically the, the, the leaders have to fall off no matter what he does. Marquez is great, but he ain't that great where Bagnaya and by the way, I'm thinking all this stuff about Marquez, but if you watch World Ducati Day, the old Marquez showed up. When, if you watch World Ducati Day, the last turn, the last turn, all right, he was in fourth trying to get third, and Bulaga was coming around, and he, he basically booty bumped Bulaga. I don't know if you remember that dance in the 70s, ain't no bump, no more, no big fat woman, and he booty bumped Bulaga, and Bulaga crashed, was like, like this, and Marquez crashed, and Marquez got third place, he got the podium, and Marquez like, I didn't feel nothing. Did I hit him? Did I hit him? Did I hit him? I don't know if I hit him. Really, Mark, you didn't know, but Mark offered to give him his helmet. That's what, this dude's in the hospital getting checked out to see if his shoulder's still there. And Mark is, was going to give him his helmet. You got to love Mark, man. That's the old Mark right there. So, uh, but basically, it's the GP23 being a little bit behind the GP24. Anyway, I know I'm rambling right now, but man, it's just great to get back to it. If you get a chance, go to YouTube, watch World Ducati Week, and watch the race between the, the champions and see what Marquez does. I thought it was, I thought, unless you're Bulaga, I kind of thought it was great. Still, the old Marquez is still there, but now he's like that veteran where he knows he may have lost half a step, but he's more cerebral now in his approach to racing, and it's beautiful to watch. So uh, he could have got, a, he, I think he could have got a podium. If you watch the last, the last lap, he, uh, the lead to uh, Bagnaya was less than a second, and then uh, he didn't really go forward. Bagnaya got the, the podium, but still, it's going to be great racing toward the last ten races of the year. Stay tuned and see what happened. Um, tell me what you guys think, man. What's your, what was your favorite livery? Um, what was your favorite moment of the weekend? Tell me what you thought. Like I said. Um, we need something different in GP. I think GP's doing a great job. We need something different to get the mm back in. I think we need to bring old school liveries back. Pick one track every year to, to bring it back. So I like that shot in the dark. I like the little shot in the arm from my old GP. Anyway, I've been going on too long. Thank you guys for listening. And until then, till the next race, peace.